Hey guys, it's Jen with Two Ends. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do an ombre, and I am using some serious green colors here. <laughs> These colors are absolutely amazing. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but I did already put my peel base on. I put peel base on underneath every single mani. I use UNT or UNT. I have no idea how to pronounce it still. The colors that I'm using are from Double Dip. I've got Woolly Mittens and Timeless Sage. And then from Rocky Mountain Dip Powder, I actually am trying her clear. So this is the first time I've ever used her clear. I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm also using Rocky Mountain Dip Powder's liquids. So I just want to show you guys this real quick. This is the Woolen Mittens. It has like gold glitter flakes in it. It's such a pretty color. And then the Timeless Sage is also very pretty. There is no glitter in the Timeless Sage, so it's just a complete solid color. Make sure that you stir your powders before you begin. Always, always, always remember to stir your powders. So I did the first layer of woolen mittens off camera because I don't want this video to be super long. Um, I did, I wanna show you guys this, isn't that so cute? It's a finger rest. I actually just bought this, I just came in um, the other day, so I figured I would give it a try. I got it from the nail prop shop. It is a small business too, so a small military business. I love to support those whenever I can, if at all possible. I did two layers of each color. And that, for me, was the perfect amount of layers. The color was dark enough. That's what I was looking for. So I am going to speed this part of the video up just because I don't want this video to be so long. Um, but I also don't want to cut any of it out. So I'm just going to let you watch in fast speed for a little bit. Alrighty, so do that to all three fingers. Do as many layers as you need. Like I said, I did two layers and it was perfect. So now we'll get started with the actual ombre process. When you're doing an ombre, the best, there's, there's a lot of methods out there, but I found this method to be um, very easy and maybe one of the best. So what you want to do is you want to start with a full dip on your entire nail and you want that to be the lighter of the two colors. So the Timeless Sage is lighter than the dark green, lighter than the woolen mittens. So I did a full complete dip on my finger. And just like a regular dip, make sure to clean around your cuticle edges. And you guys, I know that this finger rest is probably supposed to be used for something else. But I'm telling you, it is absolutely perfect for what I am using it for right now. Truly, it's, it keeps my fingers stable while I'm trying to clear out my cuticles. It really is an awesome little buy. You guys should totally try it. That being said, I did try to use it to actually paint my nails with, and it was very awkward for me. So I just will continue to do it the old-fashioned way. Maybe another finger would actually be okay, but my ring finger just did not want to sit on it. <laughs> so uh, here we are. So we want to do the same thing. Just put a one layer of the lighter color on your nail. So I'm not spending a lot of time on tutorials with this video just because I want to focus on the ombre, but I do want to mention if you get any liquid on your skin, make sure to wipe it off because the powder will stay on your skin and you're going to have a, a tough time cleaning that mess up. And if you notice, I'm not dipping my fingers. I'm actually placing it into the powder. This works really, really well, especially if the powder is super fluffy and it's super fluffy if you just finished stirring it. So, but of course, any way that you choose to actually dip your nails or lay your nails or do the pour over method whatever method you choose is fine it doesn't affect the ombre so 
once you have that first layer of dip powder on, obviously make sure that you dust it off and get off all the excess powder. And now we're gonna start the ombre. So I used two different brushes. You can technically use the same brush if you want, but I didn't want to contaminate my powders. The only thing you want to make sure is that your brushes are fluffy. The fluffier the brush is, of course, the more powder it will, will hold in there. So the goal isn't really how much powder can you get on your nail. The goal is how you're going to apply the powder so that it has the ombre effect. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that. The next step is you want to put a layer of the base coat over your entire nail. And then you want to start with the darker powder. So you take one of your brushes and you dip it into the powder and you just lightly tap it over your nail. Make sure to turn your nail so that you get the sides of your nail covered with powder. Because if you don't turn your nail, then you're just going to have a bunch of powder on the top of the nail, but the sides are going to be blank, basically. Then you move on to the second color. You do the exact same thing. You dip your brush into the powder and you just tap it on the rest of your nail. Make sure you turn your finger so you get the entire nail covered. Something else to note when you're doing that dark color towards the end of the color, towards the end of the tapping, you want to lift your brush up a little higher so that it creates that ombre effect. I'll, I'll explain to you more when we do the second nail, but of course clean up your cuticles just like normal. I was very happy with the way that this ombre turned out. I actually probably didn't even need to do another layer, but I wanted to actually do a couple things. You could see on the side I was missing a little bit of green, so I knew I needed to fix that. But I also wanted to show you the actual tutorial the whole way, so, so I continued on. So for this nail, I started the, I wanted the dark color at the bottom of my nail. So it's the same exact thing. Dip your brush into the powder and then just lightly tap it over wherever you want it on your nail. Make sure you turn, turn your nail, your finger side to side so you get full coverage completely. So right here towards the end, after you get coverage on your nail, when you're trying to blend that color, lift your brush up higher. The higher your brush is, the more the powder is going to spread when it falls and create more of that blend effect. But you don't want to go too high because otherwise the powder will fall further up on your nail where you don't want it. Brush placement really is key. So just keep that in mind and then switch over. Don't forget to switch your brushes if you're using two different brushes and then do the same thing to the light part of your nail. Here you can see how the colors look like they're blended into each other. It is because with the brush, when the powder falls from the brush, it's, it's basically blending into each other. For the second layer, we're going to start with the lighter color this time. Because remember, we started tapping the dark color first for the first layer. So we're just going to do the exact opposite for the second layer. If you're happy with the design and how everything fell into place, you don't even need to do another layer. But if you're not happy, then do another layer. Keep this in mind. You will either do one layer or three layers or five layers. If you do two layers, for some reason, when you blend, if you do... All right, how do I explain this? So we started, we put the light color on first and then we tapped the dark color first. That was for a reason. If you do two layers, then you're starting with the light color. See how we're doing a light color now? And then we're gonna do the dark color. It just doesn't blend as well if you do that. So you're either gonna do one layer or three layers or five layers to get that blended effect. Of course, it is not a rule that you cannot do two layers for an ombre. I'm just saying that it just tends to look better. It's typically a one or a three layer to have the powders look completely blended. You could always go in and do the scrub method for your ombre, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're not doing the scrub method. 
And here you can see how the two colors, this is the second layer, the two colors just didn't really blend together as nicely as they did for that first layer. And that has to do with the order that they were done in, but I don't want to confuse you with what order to do it in when and light color, dark color and blah, blah, blah. Just uh, do what I did and <laughs> it'll all work out just fine for you. The two important things that you want to remember. Number one, start with a full complete dip of the lighter color out of the two. And then the second thing that you want to remember is make sure that you alternate the colors. So between the layers, you, you alternate what color you start with. Now, I really don't want to confuse you, but I do realize that we technically did not alternate our starting colors for that first and second layer, but it's okay. It all works out. This is the, the method that works for me. So like I said, just follow the steps and you will have a beautiful ombre. Now I'm just going to stop yapping and I'm just going to let you watch the final layer. But before I do that, I just want to point out that you notice the lines are harsh for this layer. So now we move on to the third layer and we'll blend those colors, the lines a little bit better. It'll, they'll be softer edges. I promise. And now you can just watch with some music.
All right, you guys. Hey, I wanted to show this to you real quick. This is Rocky Mountain Dip Powders Clear. Holy moly. Look at how soft and smooth this powder is. It is so fine. It literally just falls right off the stir stick. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Now that all being said, the next step is to encapsulate our nails with the clear powder. Very important to encapsulate. If nothing else, at least encapsulate the nails that you did the ombre on. This will protect the design from when you file and buff. And I'm going to speed the video up again so that you can watch it uh, in fast speed <laughs> so that the video isn't hours long. And this is the first time that I've ever used Rocky Mountain Dip Powders Clear Powder, so I was pretty excited about it. Obviously, I recorded the video already, so I know how it worked out. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a good product. I highly recommend it. Well, that is a green manicure right there. <laughs> that is some green for sure. I think it looks pretty cool. I think it turned out pretty nice, but we're not done yet. After you've activated it, now it is time to file. Here you're going to shape your nails to be the shape and the length that you want. Make sure that you smooth out your cuticle areas so that they're not too thick. Sometimes powder can build up along your cuticles, so you want to make sure that you smooth it down like I'm doing here. You can either use a hand file or you can use an e-file, whichever one you prefer. But take heed, if you use an e-file, sometimes you can overfile and you'll go through your color. That is one of the reasons we put the clear coat over it, the clear powder, but it doesn't always protect from overfiling. Once you are done filing, then it is time to buff them. The reason that you want to buff your nails is to smooth them out because after you use dip powder, your nails can be rough and sometimes even lumpy. So the buffing block helps to smooth them out and make them soft and, well, smooth. And after you buff them, go wash your hands. I always love this part after I've buffed it and they're so soft and smooth and my hands are clean. It just looks so good, but we're still not done. We do need to do our second round of activator now. After about two minutes, once the activator has dried, then take a lint-free wipe and alcohol. I like to wipe my nails and make sure that I get any extra activator that's left over or any powder or dust or anything that's just still on my nails after washing. It is important for you to do this because the activator will ruin your top coat. So if nothing else, you're, you really want to make sure that you get any leftover activator off. And then take a dry wipe and make sure that you dry your nails so that we can do the top coat. As an added note here, the top coat does need the activator to dry. So don't think about skipping that step. You definitely need to put it on. So for your first 
coat of top coat. You don't need to do perfect at all. Just get it on there as quickly as you can and make sure that you wipe your brush in between dipping it back into the bottle. That is very important also because if there is any activator left over on your nail, it's now on your brush and then you're gonna contaminate your top coat or harden your brush. And in case it wasn't clear, I sped that part up, so. And then you wanna make sure that you let the top coat dry. This usually, once you're done with the hand, I usually know I'm ready to do the second layer, the second coat. But really the, the telling tale is once it looks like it's starting to shrink, like shrink wrap, then you know you could go in with your second coat of top coat. You do want to give it some time between finishing your hand before going in with the second coat, but you don't need to wait forever. So for the second layer of top coat, then you really can be perfect with this one. Just make sure that you get it totally perfect and detailed and always remember to cap your free edge. And it's not as important to wipe your brush on the last layer of top coat as it is for the first layer but I do still recommend it. You may see that I don't do it. If you do notice your top coat, I'm sorry, if you do notice that your brush is hardening and you're not wiping for the second coat, then you should start wiping your brush. That's your public service announcement for this video. <laughs> I'll just let you guys watch here for a little bit without me up in your ear off. And we are getting close, but we're still not done yet. But uh, so far, so good. I definitely like the look of the ombre. You want to make sure that your top coat is dry before we come to the last and final step, which is to show your cuticles some love. <laughs> um, your cuticles need to be taken care of. So after every single mani, make sure that you put cuticle oil on. Uh, it really really is important because when you do your manicures when you do your nails you don't take care of your cuticles at all we file we buff we mess with them they become really really dry and especially with all the product that we use also so that cuticle oil really helps to just moisturize them if you have a happy healthy cuticle then your nails will be happy and healthy so always 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 use cuticle oil and here it is the finished and final product I am super happy with how it turned out. Hopefully you guys liked it. Please, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.